Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk about my first impressions of the Thunderbolt. I've had this machine for about a week. I've put it through its paces. We're going to look at three different mediums today. Wood, both an eighth inch and quarter inch. We're going to do a few acrylic projects and some mirror acrylic, some solid uh, color acrylic. And then we're going to go to leatherette. Those typically are the three mediums that I use a lot, and I was very interested to see how this machine was going to handle it. So let's talk a little bit about that. One of the things that uh, we all needed to know was how is it going to engrave, how is it going to cut. I had no problems cutting eighth inch and quarter inch ply, um, along with uh, the engraves on this particular machine are beautiful, nice and dark. And you'll see I've got some examples, uh, some video examples, of engraving on uh, plywood. And that does a really nice job. Not a problem there. Once we go into leatherette, one of the things I was very curious about is I'd heard that RF tubes uh, handle leatherette better because the beam spot is so much smaller than a regular glass CO2. One of the things that I quit uh, doing is metallic leatherette, both silver and in the gold, because it was so inconsistent. I will tell you I'm happy to report with this machine uh, I've done both gold and silver and I have not missed a beat, meaning that I haven't had any inconsistencies whatsoever. I've done full sheets of uh, both gold and silver and no problems whatsoever. The other thing that I noticed on Leather Red is I I'm only using one setting for both the colored to black and also the colored to metallic colors, which is great. Before, I would have just about a different setting uh, for each color when I'm trying to do it on my CO2 glass tube. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'll show you some video today of engraving some gold. Again, that's always been my nemesis, and uh, I'm happy to say that it looks like this machine is going to get, uh, get me back into the leatherette metallic game, which is great because a lot of people like that stuff. I like that stuff. It's beautiful stuff if you can consistently generate it. So that's going to be something else we're going to do. The other thing that I will tell you, just uh, first impressions, the fit and finish are just like all the other Thunder lasers. Uh, the quality is excellent. The other thing that I will tell you is the fan that they have on this particular machine works great. I've got about a four foot run that goes to the outside and if I'm doing any some engraving or anything, the fan that the inline fan that they've got uh, included in this machine uh, takes that right away. I don't ever have any smoke buildup in my cabinet. So for those of you that were worried because it was a four inch hose, don't be. Um, I haven't had a situation where I've had smoke in the cabinet. It does a great job. The only thing I will tell you is that I built in about a 12 second delay in light burn. So it gives it about 12 seconds for that fan to ramp up before it actually starts the project. And I think that's a smart move. I think that's the best way to handle that. Um, cleaning it up is a piece of cake. The head, uh, the laser head is different uh, than what you're used to if you're coming from a, uh, a CO2 laser thunder style. The, the head itself is completely different, but it's easy to take out, clean the lens, those kind of things. The other thing that I will tell you that I really like is on the mirrors, you basically just unscrew one little knob and, they, and, and you can slide the mirror out, clean it, slide it back in, tighten it back up, and you're done. So they've really provided some nice features when it comes to maintenance on this machine. The other thing that I will tell you is the controller on this machine is fantastic. It's got some really nice features that even the big machines don't have. Um, and you'll see those in an upcoming video. I'll go ahead and showcase the controller and how you use it, those kind of things. But there are some real time savers when it comes to using your controller that we don't have on, on uh, older models. Very happy about that. Let's go check out some projects. I'll talk to you about the videos that I've taken, what I found. Uh, I really haven't found any negatives at this point. Um, everything that I've tried in this machine has been really good. I will tell you that my 26 inch stand that I built uh, is perfect. It, it, it provides the laser at about 44 inches to the top where the controller is. 
For me, that's uh, just about right. And in general, um, I'm really going to like this machine. Let's go watch some uh, other content. I'll show you some engraving on those three mediums. One feature I love about this new machine is you have the ability to adjust your lighting inside the laser cabinet. So on your control panel you can go from 100% all the way down to off in 20% increments. So like right now with this white acrylic I have a hard time seeing that red dot. I can go from 80% to 60, 40, 20 or just turn it off and now I can see my red dot much easier than I can when I had this well-lit cabinet. So you can adjust the lighting in this cabinet, which I really enjoy. I'm not cutting this uh, with just a little bit of air since we've got the, uh, the masking on both the front and the back. And uh, just playing with different settings. We're currently cutting at 90% at six millimeters per second. See how this works. I find if you go a little bit slower, you get a lot better edge. Um, with most acrylics, going as fast as you can is not necessarily the greatest thing to do. You suffer on edge quality. This is with both the masking on the top and the bottom. Drops right out. So let's show you some wood uh, engravings. I started with just some simple uh, pictures here. I love this uh, eye photo just because it gives you a wide range. And these are just some different uh, powers. These were all at, uh, I believe, uh, 325 millimeters per second at 12.5% power. Uh, this was all at uh, 1,000 dpi. And uh, this cat was at 1,000 dpi. Wanted to see what the uh, score looked like, so I did a couple of different scores with slightly different settings. You can see how fine these score lines are. Remember when you're scoring you've got to adjust your minimum and your maximum power setting and they should always be different 
when you're scoring. Um, and so you can see this laser does an absolute beautiful job of scoring. This cat photo was uh, done at 250 millimeters per second at 12% power. These are the same. This is just uh, engraved just the eyes and then this is the full picture. Um, great texture in this cat's photo. Um, I think doing pictures on the bolt is going gonna, is gonna to be um, pretty easy and you're going to be able to get some stunning results. So engraving photos I think uh, will be a lot of fun. Okay, wanted to show you an engraving here. This is on uh, quarter inch Baltic birch. It was engraved at 400 millimeters per second at 40% power. I haven't touched this. This is right straight off the machine. You can see there's just a little bit of a scorch mark where it uh, cut out this uh, internal circle. But in general, the outside edges of the cut line are real clean. You got a nice dark brown here. It was cut at... Um, 90% power, 8%, or excuse me, 90% power, 8 millimeters per second, and it's got a nice golden brown edge. And uh, so, yeah, this thing engraves really well. This is just, I, I haven't really engraved anything on the, on the eighth inch, but it's going to be the same. And again, uh, really nice golden brown cut edges. This was cut uh, at 80% uh, power. 20 millimeters per second and I haven't done anything on this piece this is right straight off the laser there's a few brown edges but um, very manageable wanted to show you the acrylic I cut I cut uh, different thicknesses some with glitter some without I did cut some white acrylic because sometimes white can be a real pain uh, you'll see scorch marks where you won't in uh, darker colors but as you can see the edges are real nice and clean. You don't have any pock marks or divots. This is quarter inch white and quarter inch purple. And then you have uh, eighth inch glitter silver along with the turquoise mirrored acrylic. My wife's name is Hope. That way, that, that way she gets some new uh, name tags for her Stanley tumblers, but uh, yeah, it does a real nice job on acrylic. I really didn't have too many problems um, dialing in settings for the acrylic, and uh, these seem to turn out real good. So I think this machine is going to be a real, real good one for acrylic if you do a lot of acrylic. Let's talk a little bit about leatherette. Um, the metallics I've somewhat stayed away from unless I'm using my fiber laser. Uh, doing them on the CO2 has been problematic in the past, especially the gold. You just don't get consistency. But I will tell you with this new RF tubed uh, laser, you can see that these are absolutely beautiful. Um, I did a whole sheet of this gold primarily because gold has been uh, just a, a bear for me to deal with and I haven't had one minute's trouble with either ma the, ma uh, the, ma the gold metallic or the black to silver and so based on that it looks like this smaller beam size that you get with this laser uh, is going to be the ticket for the leatherette so these all three were engraved at 600 millimeters per second at 14 percent power and I got the same results. Usually, especially the metallics, you'll have different settings in the past. It looks like with uh, this machine, you might be able to uh, keep it within just a, a setting or two. But look at these. These really turned out nice. The reason why I chose this design for the leatherette is usually when you have little bitty tiny uh, elements like this, especially for this metallic, it'll fade away or it won't engrave at all. And one thing I'm noticing on the wood engraving along with the metallic and the leatherette engraving is the detail that this machine captures is really good.
but uh, check out the leatherette. Wanted to do a quick engraving on a pencil just to see what it looked like with this smaller beam size on the bolt. Engraving pencils is a piece of cake. These will look great. Two seconds is what it took to engrave this pencil. Well, there you have it, my first impressions. As you can tell, I'm pretty happy with this machine so far, and I think this is going to be a great addition to Thunder's lineup. As always, if you appreciate the content, give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button. Contribute to the channel, and those contributions are making this content possible. I sure appreciate you hanging in there with me. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.